Spoilers ahead for Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul has been on my mind ever since its finale aired last Monday. A show driven by its complex characters, rich visual storytelling, and constantly asking what will happen to Jimmy slash Gene slash Saul and Kim with the prior knowledge of Breaking Bad is why I believe it is the greatest accomplishment in television history. The character work of Better Call Saul is unmatched because of its slow burn pacing of the majority of the series. Introducing the viewer to Jimmy McGill was a risky and bold choice because everyone wanted the lovable and funny Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad. This was, however, when I realized that Peter Gold had a real story to tell instead of just a cash grab spinoff of one of the most successful shows of all time. The inclusion of Chuck McGill, Jimmy's brother, makes for a great conflict because of the two being so directly opposite of each other. Chuck also adds more backstory to the sleazy lawyer and shows that Slip and Jimmy has always been there. Mike is given more screen time and his storyline is easily one of my favorites. I can't help but be so taken away by his performance every time he comes to screen, and the fine family dynamic is just one of my favorites throughout the series. Nacho Varga is a great addition to the series, as he is the heart of the cartel storyline, and the relationship with his father is heartbreaking. Some would say that he is the Jesse Pinkman of the series. Gus is later introduced in season 3, and I like seeing him a lot on screen, not because of him doing his Gus skeins, but because of his struggle, not only with creating the Empire, but connecting with others, the wine scene is probably the most tragic send-off throughout the series. So many characters to mention, but the key one is Kim Wexler, a straight-laced lawyer who works at HHM and becomes romantically involved with Jimmy. Kim becomes the most fascinating character to watch easily. The viewers e always wondering if she will be the victim of Jimmy's schemes or if she will join in and become Saul's right hand by the end of Season 5. She is the pinpoint of Jimmy's journey and the driving force of the series. Visual storytelling is much more than making pretty and composed shots with cool colors. It is something that the director, the DOP, the set designer, the light team, etc. come up with to convey what a character is feeling, what the viewer should anticipate, foreshadowing, and of course, symbolism with imagery. There are many moments throughout each episode I would love to point out, but my favorite is easily within the opening minutes of Season 6, Episode 9, Fun and Games. For context, this episode picks up right after the biggest moment in the series, Howard's death. It starts with Saul looking up at his new office's sign, and to me it symbolizes him moving on so fast and suppressing his emotions. It then cuts to Kim's pro bono clients, and then quickly cuts to a mundane Mike scrubbing up Howard's blood from every inch of the house. It is absolutely bone chilling and the absolute definition of a cold opening. The sequence ends with Kim walking towards the exit where everything is white outside, telling us where she will be later at the end of the episode, leaving Jimmy. When the two finally return to the house, there is no longer Howard's body or the blood. We have the same reaction of uncomfort as Kim and Saul, and to me, this is the send-off of the original series and into new territory where the prologue begins. Knowing the events of Breaking Bad will show you who makes it onto the next series, but every scene with an unfamiliar character like Lalo or Nacho will keep you on the edge of your seat. Still with this information, there are moments throughout the series where I'm on the edge of my seat for Mike or Gus or Jimmy, and that is due to terrific writing. Kim's journey was unanimously agreed the one that kept everyone on their toes and would make or break Jimmy. Seeing Jimmy become Saul after Kim leaves him felt wrong and out of place. This wasn't the character we grew to love in this series. Nor did Kim. The man we grew to love in Breaking Bad became the man we grew to hate in Better Call Saul. The finale of the series, titled Saul Gone, is one about regret. Regret of the scams he pulled, but more importantly, regret of what he didn't do. He could have made his life work with Chuck, which is hinted in the finale. He could have been the best lawyer in Albuquerque, which is hinted by the fact that he dropped his 180 year sentence down to 7. He could have made it work with Kim, but above all that, he could have dropped Slip and Jimmy. The confession at the end of the series is fitting to the man he always wanted to be. Coming clean meant he stopped being the apathetic Saul Goodman and returned to the man we were all missing in the last episodes, Jimmy McGill. He'd rather spend the rest of his days as Jimmy McGill than as Saul Goodman. He gains Kim's respect back, and that's all he ever wanted in the end. It's a truly humbling end to a story I never knew I needed. In closing, this show didn't just exceed expectations, it reinvented what a prequel could do. Better Call Saul is a statement of what any spin-off should be, and is easily television's greatest accomplishment. Video adjourned. Thank you for watching this, it really means a lot to me. I spent a lot of time working on this one, um, writing it mainly, but uh, yeah, this show is really special to me, and I was so close to just dropping the video, but I felt like I needed to say this because it 
just stayed on my mind and it probably will stay on it. I might just rewatch it. But thank you for watching and I really appreciate it.